Uh, recording. Um, it's uh, part of the second oldest media art program in the country. Um, so I think that's really exciting. It's uh, second to um, MIT Media Labs. So just so you all know, like the, the CADRA, um, the Center for Art Design Research and Education, uh, is an old program uh, with a really well-established history and trajectory. Um, and so by joining the DMA program, you all uh, are going to be in that conversation as well, which is amazing because there have been some uh, canonical, uh, very important artists who have come through this space and people who've gone on uh, to be both uh, influential in the art space and people to go on and be influential in the, uh, in the uh, industry. Um, so that's really great. Uh, now, thinking in terms of what your portfolios look like, like and how you begin to structure your portfolio. Um, I think, you know, I, I have questions for you all as to like, what are the things that you think you want to do with your portfolios? So that's kind of my first question. So put that in the back of your very head as to like, what kind of questions um, you have for me uh, when we're looking at portfolios, because I think of the application to DMA, I mean, there's really what, there's like three primary sections. So first off, you have to have the units to get into the program, right? So you have to have this baseline of 23 units or whatever the lower division classes. So that's important. Um, that's like kind of just a set number, right? Uh, what else do you have to have? You have to have a decent GPA, yeah? So right now um, it's somewhat flexible, um, but you know, the reality is like mostly like a 3.5 to four um, is the uh, criterion for admission. Uh, at, the, at this point, that's crazy, right? That's like holy guacamole! <laughs> you're like you're like Andrew, you're scaring me. Okay, this wasn't a, this wasn't a terror session, um, but uh, that's that's kind of the a part of the reality. Now, um, what I will say about that whole thing is that there is some flexibility with both of those metrics. Okay, so while those are the quantitative metrics of the application, um, there's some flexibility there. Uh, which is interesting. And that flexibility is dependent on the portfolio. So um, the way that that would work is that like, say for instance, you had like a 3.2, but your portfolio was amazing. Um, that is grounds for me or uh, Rhonda or Craig or Chelsea to advocate for one of you all coming into the program. Say, oh, well, you know, maybe they don't have the best academic track record, but we really think the student uh, is a part of the conversation here and they should be in the program. Um, that, that can happen uh, and it has happened in the past. Um, what we don't typically see is like, if you have a really like shoddy portfolio, but like a 4.0, that also is somehow like grounds for um, like, well, the student, you know, really has good grades, but the portfolio just is not in the right place. That's another thing. It's like, um, that, that's also grounds for like, well, we're, this is not the the, the person to be in the program, right? We're looking for people to uh, engage with the community, uh, people who uh, wanna be in the program and people who are excited about the medium. Um, you know, like I, uh, as obnoxious as I am <laughs> in class, for those of you who have me, um, you know, I, I love this stuff. It's, it's really, really fun for me. Um, and I like breaking computers and I like breaking computers in really interesting ways. And I like making artwork out of it. Um, you know, that's kind of the long and the short of it. So when you start to think about what your overall trajectories are, when you start to make works and really make work that uh, is interesting, um, that's, that's what we're looking for, right? That's the whole uh, thing, you know? So GPAs, I don't like, okay. So yeah, Alex, uh, to your point, what's a good GPA? I don't know. I mean, you know, what, what do you apply to the program with like, a two, four, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but your, your portfolio is amazing. What do, do I mean, what's the faculty going to say? It's like, God, this, this person, what a, what an interesting case. Um, you know, that might be a harder, uh, a harder sell from my perspective, but I can tell you that I, from my perspective, want to push things as far away from the uh, quantitative metrics as possible. I don't believe uh, in uh, sort of the quantification of your portfolios. Um, and that just isn't that interesting to me personally. You know, that's the way I feel. Um, and I'm on the committee, so that's a thing. But, uh, you know, like, the, let's talk about the baseline for portfolios. Um, so, Alex, just to answer your question though, also, uh, by the way, what I was saying before is that a, a reasonable GPA is probably from like, I think borderline, like baseline is a 3.0. 
I think that's uh, what is in the writing. So you have to have above a 3.0, but um, really the expectation is probably anywhere from a 3, 3, 3, 4 up to a 4.0. We do see, you know, students with those types of GPAs. Um, yeah, all the time. So that's totally reasonable. Uh, and I think, you know, um, in the art program, uh, that shouldn't be too difficult. Maybe the, the GEs are a bit harder to, to hit, but I think nowadays, like y'all, I don't know, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's hopefully you, you all are keeping good GPAs and showing up to class and doing a good job. Um, you know, that's, that's a part of things, right? Um, that doesn't mean that like you don't live a life too, but it means like you just, you're becoming adults, you know, and you're being responsible and, you know, it's like school's expensive and you're taking your time and you're taking my time. So let's all make it worthwhile, right? Okay, so um, the the quantifiable things uh, within the within the portfolio requirement, um, we're looking for 10 works. Uh, that's sort of standard. Um, seven of which should be DMA specific. So that's not to say that we're looking for works that you made in Art 74, uh, Art 75, Art 101. You can put those works in there, but they're not required. It just needs to be a digital work. What do I mean by digital work? Um, there, as all things, is some subjectivity in this. Um, if you're doing all illustrations of characters, hmm, might be a bit uh, harder of a, um, you know, argument to be made, um, as opposed to somebody who's coming in who's building pieces with uh whatever technology and really questioning the nature of technology that's i think more to the core of what we're looking for all this is uh fairly difficult to begin to quantify actually um it's it's uh it's a bit strange because i i think the question is like what makes a really good artwork and so i would put that question back onto you all like have you seen any portfolios or are you looking at artists um and who are the artists that you look at and that you're really inspired by you know, um, because ultimately within the program, uh, we are looking for you all um, to have your voice at the table, as I was saying, right? So um, if you have a unique and interesting perspective, that's way more valuable to us than students that are all producing the same exact cookie cutter assignments coming out of the program, right? That's absolutely what I don't want uh, for the program. Uh, and you don't, you all don't want that also, whether you know it or not, I mean, it's like, you don't want to look just like everybody else's resume. Uh, I can tell you when you go over to uh, computer science and engineering, it's like you can get a, a printer and just print them off, right? Because they're all the exact same. Uh, and one of the unique uh, things about DMA, one of the advantages is you all come out with some really cool and interesting portfolios. Um, and that will service you into the future. So uh, with that said, don't think about your portfolios as like something that you're doing for the program, but think about it as a way to uh, make a portrait of the work that you're making, right? Like, what does that, what does it look like? And how do you, how do you begin to explain yourselves to others? How can you start to make just a really good looking portfolio? Um, and so I would, I would encourage you all to, to start thinking about like, you know, your foundations and principles of design uh, that you're adding into that um, and how that uh, looks as well. So uh, let me share screen real fast because I did uh, prepare some stuff for you all. Uh, let me turn on chat also just so I can see it. Okay. All right. Let me close this. Sorry, I just, I was working on this super fun project too. I showed this to people in the class, but like, I'm like super jazzed right now. Like, this is great. So I have uh, control over these 3D objects in uh, this, uh, space. This is like a uh, VR scene, um, and I'm controlling this through Max. Uh, so that's really exciting where I can control this thing really quickly. And the idea here being that I want to uh, be able to uh, control it in real time for performance. Okay. So I'll put away my nerd toys. <laughs> But for those of you in my class, I was really excited because I just rebuilt this model. So this this model is sort of my background uh, model. And so I was working in Blender, which I never do. Um, but I, I built this model uh, just recently uh, today uh, and then imported that into the scene. OK, whatever. <laughs> it's not why we're here, Andrew. Stay on track. OK. <laughs> um, 
these guys, uh, I wanted to kind of like talk about this because I, I think for me, let me close this down. All right. Oh, Crystal South, hilarious. Okay. Um, for me, when I think about like the artists that really were inspirational to me, uh, you know, I, I saw a lot of artists just by going out to the art events and just like seeing stuff. And then once you see somebody's work that you like, it's worth going and checking out their website and saying like, oh, what is this person all about? Like, what do they do? You know? So I think you can go out and do a lot of research on your own and seeing how people represent themselves online is a, is a big deal. Because I think there's even an argument to be made. Like if you're presenting, maybe not the most, like, like what if you showed up with only like seven pieces, but they were all amazing, right? What's the faculty gonna say? Say, oh, defer for another semester because they didn't have three extra pieces in their portfolio. Okay, whatever. I guess this is all just a conversation around like professionalization of your practices and how you make things. Um, so this Aaron Barthol is cool. Um, this, when you start to look at these, uh, these portfolios, you can see how professional I think most people look and how they present themselves. So this is like a really nice, you know, full screen navigation uh, in this, um, and then he has his work. So like his works up here, uh, if you look at this, then he just has a standard grid layout. But even when you hit this homepage, it's like you get this really nice uh, big images background. So this is from 2022, um, this is 21, right? He's got recent works that he's putting in here that all just like are great documentation, right? I think this is a really nice, um, let me add some of these into chat. Also, this is a really nice uh, portfolio in my opinion. So maybe you don't see this and you're just like garbage, but <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, I think it's worth uh, checking some of these out and just saying like, oh, okay, cool. well, how did, how did Aram make this? And how could I start to make my portfolio look as good, right? Like what types of things could you start to do? So this is um, uh, Emilio and I, I like this one too. This is uh, a person who's working primarily like as an NFT artist now. Right, but you can see the consistency um, in their portfolio, which I think is quite good. Um, and then you can see their links, right? So again, they have kind of a consistent iconography through their uh, through their portfolio, which is cool. Um, and I just, I don't know, I like it. I was looking for this artist, which I couldn't find. I tried desperately to find this um, this artist who was like, they're not an NFT artist. They were this designer from Japan. And all of the, like the page was like these super big, bright primary colors with these geometric patterns. And the mouse was like huge. Like the mouse was like four times the size of a normal mouse, right? So you walk, you go onto this web page and you're just like, whoa, like, okay, Toto, we're not in Kansas. Like, this is like, you know, clearly you've gone into some like artist's vision of what their website should be. And I think if you all can begin to formulate that aesthetic language around your web pages and your portfolios, they're gonna pop. Right, they're gonna look really, really good, and the faculty is gonna be like, "Holy shit!" Right, this is great. So um, I think this is kind of a cool one. I'll, I said share that link as well. Um, this one, uh, like from a from Jack is wild. I don't know. This is another uh, artist and web designer that was building. So you can see like. This is almost a bit more of a uh, minimal approach, right? Where they just have text um, get that they're just like putting out there for each one of their projects. Um, and I think this is kind of nice. And okay, so they're this designer. So they're like linking out to these separate pages that they've built, uh, which is also kind of a smart approach. Uh, and then once you click on a link, okay, the website is going to now break. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, this is not expecting, um, this is not what we're expecting from anybody, but uh, I think it's worth like seeing like really good examples of what people can do and how like, you know, flexible of a medium uh, the internet can be and how you can build something that's still usable, but also kind of like ridiculous too, right? Okay, <laughs> I don't know this thing. We keep coming back to it. So, um, Fat Studios. Again, you know, just like these are these are all special effects. I don't know that we you necessarily need to go down the road of special effects yet, but it's worth knowing that it's out there. Oh wait, I said I was going to share those links. Crap. All okay. right, the history real quick.
this one, history, Fat Studio. This reminds me, I, I was first thinking this was um, uh, Fat Labs. So Fat Labs is now closed, but this is a group of artists that is really great, uh, based out of Carnegie Mellon in uh, the Studio for Creative Inquiry. Um, so this is a very um, interesting group. Uh, they had their last show at Gray Area, um, but they were really having a lot of discussions around uh, technology and what it means to have a critical discourse within technology. Um, so this is, it's quite uh, um, interesting work, but these were, <laughs> these were taken at Gray Area where they had, uh, I don't know if you all saw the PRISM um, scandal, but it basically was talking about the major uh, companies that were involved in data collection for the US government. Um, and it's kind of unethical, uh, but an interesting uh, space. Wait, okay, I, again, I didn't, oh, I did share that, cool. Okay, so moving along. Um, you know, I think in terms of uh, like what formal design principles you use, um, it's worth thinking about uh, what, you know, your text and font are, um, how that presents to your audience. Um, and what that looks like as far as uh, building out a robust website. Now, I will say a lot of these examples that I'm showing are, are quite uh, cleanly polished, right? Like, I don't think it's the expectation, but if you were to take, like, regardless of that navigation, I think the actual layout and the just like geometric patterning of this website looks quite nice. Personally, that's what I think. Um, so, it's worth like looking at, you know, how people talk about their, their works too. Um, so when you put a piece and when you're submitting this for portfolio review, I'm not specifically looking for people who say, well, you know, I built this, um, whatever, this glitch art piece for art 74, um, in fall of 2020. Okay. That's like totally uninteresting. Um, the, the way to position that is to say, well, I built this piece that is uh, converting audio files into a textual image and then back into audio files, which I edited. And this is, you know, engaging in this conversation around the nature of formatting of data, right? Or something along these lines. Like, how do you begin to uh, start to explain, like, artistically what you're doing? Not the necessarily like, oh, I built this for a class, Okay. Am I moving too fast? This is also, um, you know, I, I like this design personally. It's just this like super bright colors that pop. Looks great. If you all have used P5.js, um, this wouldn't be too difficult to do something like this in P5, I don't think. <clears throat> so again, the question is like, how do you begin to flex your skills? Um, that you're learning in DMA to start to build out interesting pieces. I was I was looking for this specific artist. All right. Computers Club. This is another take. Has anybody heard of Computers Club before? Pretty classic. This is kind of a broken website. I mean, this thing is broken all around, but also amazing. It's super influential. So when you go to Computers Club, I don't even like, I don't even know what's going on here. But um, Computers Club is like club is now kind of broken in a lot of ways. Uh, it used to be Flash and Flash is no longer supported. Um, but as you go into here, you can see these like original Francois Gamma pieces, which are gorgeous. Um, and Francois Gamma was this uh, sort of GIF artist um, who was doing a lot of work like 10, 15 years ago, um, specifically with these 3D renders that are then converted uh, with custom shaders, I think is what he's doing. But super weird, right? <laughs> Does anybody feel like they walk like that to class? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Francois Gamma is great though, uh, but I'll share this one with you as well.
specifically the thing I was looking for, I don't know if I can find this. Okay, that's fine. That's a login. I want to see if I can find, there's a members list, I think down here maybe. Yeah, in here. No, somewhere. It's hard to navigate. This page is like super broken at this point, which is hilarious. And I can't find it. Oh. I wonder if it's still like this. Like I was doing this thing where I looked at the source earlier. Oh, maybe that was it. I see a link down here. What is this? No, okay. Wow. Great demonstration, Andrew. <laughs> I want to find that. Um, okay, let's do a view page source. I don't know if it's like this. Oh, I went to, um, let, me, let me see if it's in my history because it was wild. Uh, history, computers club. I don't know if it's any of these. Access denied. I need to move this over here. But it's like, it, it was amazing. I think the, the thing that I wanted to show you, uh, maybe it's in Drawing Society. It was like members, computersclub.org. Okay. No. Okay, whatever's. I'll stop in a minute, I promise. I just wanted to uh, show you, I think, let's check out the main page and see if it works. Um, view developer, view source. Yeah, so this is crazy. Cause like when you look at the source code for this, they embedded into this like artworks into their source code. So this is like the HTML, which is actually like the representation of them in the HTML. Like, you know, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, what? this is like, that's like art, right? And I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe they had too much time, right? <laughs> but when you think about like doing this stuff, it's, it's really, it's, I thought that was like super interesting anyway. <laughs> I was like, I was like, my mind, my mind was totally blown when I saw this. <laughs> so, you know, when you think about like, what, what does it mean to make a portfolio? And how, what does it say about you? Like, this is like real nerd territory. Okay. <laughs> Which I'm totally into. Okay. Computers club classic. Um, yeah, these, this is a, a list of the artists. So I'll put this in here because this, this is the link I was actually looking for. Um, and if you wanted to look at some of these artists, uh, this is kind of cool. <clears throat> okay. So those are worth looking at. Um, the same thing artists that, you know, this person is just doing a full screen layout, um, where they're putting these pieces in. I don't know. This is like, that's pretty weird, <laughs> but okay. So it's worth I'll, I'll share some of these links, um, but I just want to hit on these points that your portfolio is in a lot of ways, the most flexible part of the application for DMA uh, and really how you build your portfolio and how you represent yourself is something to think about a lot, right? Um, how do you make digital artworks and, and what are the things that you want to say about them? Like, what does your practice and your work look like to the general public? So I, I guess my, my other thought about this is like, how do you begin to um, position this outside of the school and outside of the context of the program area in particular? So that's what I was saying before. It's like, I'm not so interested in you talking about a piece that you did for Art 74 or for Art 75 or for Art 101 or whatever. Um, it's more like, how do you begin to say, oh, this is what I show to my parents, to my neighbors. And they don't really know anything about what I do in school, but I'm trying to explain to them what I do. So how would you do that, right? That if that makes sense, hopefully, um, because I think it it helps to, you know, just like change the context um, that you're thinking in. 
I don't know. Then you get into some weird like net art spaces. I, who knows? You can't make your page. This is a good example of like what not to do. Don't go to art on us <laughs> because I can guarantee everybody in the community is gonna be like, what is going on with this? But like, maybe you make a picture, a website that's like only full screen pay or image. And then you have to like, you know, view source to even tell what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, maybe. Um, I like that approach, but I, I'm just saying, be careful with it. <laughs> I, I have, Steve, I'm not sure. I, it's like, I'm like, honestly curious now where I'm like, what is going on on this page? Okay, yeah, again. So this is like this artist, this is kind of like one of the deep threads in net art right now is like, oh, if, you're, if your page is like totally inaccessible, but then um, somebody's gonna look in the, in the source code and then they find this. <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it's like jody's bomb where you're always yeah. looking at the source code for the real art and everything else is the something <laughs> that's uh, something else it's, it's it's like seriously right it's it's so funny um it's fun though look at this do you guys know jody has anybody heard of this this art group jody j-o-d-i dot o-r-g um, who knows what this does these days? Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is kind of like stepping into the uh, into the abyss. Jody, like, so I just went to Jody and it it put me here. Okay, I don't know what this is, um, but you can watch it now. I'm gonna go back to Jody. Uh, I'm gonna go back to Jody over here. Jody. And. Oh, it's still sending me there. Interesting. I wonder if they've like before it was like oh, something 15, different. Yeah, it was like 15 pages that you'd go to. Um, yeah, and it's like these random redirects. Uh, uh <laughs> this sent this to the, I don't know. Whatever. Who knows? <laughs> Jody, Jody is a really interesting group, and they're uh, you know, really considered one of the first uh net artists, right? So people who are using the internet as a um medium, right? Anyway, okay. So those are some artists and some links. Hopefully those links are helpful um, to start to look at, look at. I know that I don't want you to feel like intimidated by those either um, in that they're like, you know, these super professional uh, websites. My thoughts on that are just, you know, like try and make something that looks really good that you're capable of doing. And it's worth, you know, taking some time and making these look really nice because you'll have them for a couple of years at least, you know, and, and really the things that I think about are, um, this is like a starting place for you all, uh, and it's not necessarily like an endpoint. So, like, think about getting your own domain if you want to. You know, it's not necessary. You don't have to. Uh, if you want to host off a of GitHub pages, that's totally reasonable, and we get those all the time, um, and students get in with them. But I think it's more about um, how can we help you start to have this uh, web presence and develop your digital practice over the next ten years, as opposed to like doing it for this semester, right? That's also a part of things. So take your time with these and try and do a good job. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Okay, so um, I know Zuka says uh, we kind of need to um, uh, maybe move things along also uh, or wrap in like 15, um, but I guess that's, uh, hopefully some idea of where I stand with all this um, and somewhat helpful. Let me stop share. Um, could we open it up for a bit of a conversation now? What, what do you all think about all this? Is there, are there any specific questions out of all this that I could answer or help with? I think it's worth also, by the way, like maybe talking to some of your colleagues in DMA, maybe if you know some uh, upper division um, DMA majors uh, and say asking them like what if they if you could see their portfolio. Because um, that's also, I think, really helpful is like, how do we start an internal conversation? Um, and like, how do you make your portfolios like look better than everybody else's? <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that's kind of one of the things is like, mm, you know, it's not like to be competitive or something, but it's also like, how do we have like a fun game within DMA um, to like all raise the tide together? That's what I think is cool. Um, Josh, uh, what is required to quote your own portfolio? That's an interesting question. What do you mean exactly? 
HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I have a, I have a, my own website coding too. I was just asking for like other people that just don't know how to code. And if they wanted to put their own portfolio, I was just wondering. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think we see some students use a uh, Wix or um, what are these like Squarespace, uh, you know, for years, like I was just like, I was like, I, I don't, I'm not into Squarespace, but then, you know, like Don, who is a, do you guys know, I don't know if you know Don Hansen. Uh, he was a graduate student who's also, he's a, like one of the better JavaScript programmers I know uh, in the world. And, um, and he's just like, yeah, like use Squarespace. Like, why not? <laughs> he's like, what's, you know, and I'm, so I'm like all anti, I'm all like, no, we need to like learn and like, you know, do it ourselves. And he's like, whatever. <laughs> he's like, I just bought a service for it. And it's way easier, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna go get a beer at the bar while you're coding, bro. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think it's it's worth like, uh, you know, choose your battles. It's really about what you want uh, and what looks best. And like, it's an equation of like time versus money and talent, right? Um, so if it's like killing you and you're just like, I can't do this, then yeah, it's worth like probably going out and getting a Squarespace. I would say if you do like, be careful with those services. Uh, they They do kind of have some predatory practices to lock you into um keeping your information on those platforms like they do not want you to go away um so once you register a domain they will hold it hostage um so just you know keep that in mind that it's like kind of a bummer uh if you want to move migrate away from squarespace in the future that's why i don't necessarily like you know wix or squarespace or any of the other groups cargo collective isn't too bad or they used mm -hmm. to be I'm sorry, when you say that they keep your information hostage, do you mean that anything that you create using that they will not give to you if you were to move somewhere else? And you have to I think they were doing like some crazy practices, like like you register your domain name. So like if you get a URL, like myamazingurl.com and you put it onto their servers, I think they literally will charge you like kind of a lot to move it off there. Wow. Uh, and it's like, fine, like you have to like threaten legal action. Even uh, in just the general practice of most CMSs like that is that there's not very good export features to move it to something else. So if you wanted to make your own domain like on GitHub later, you'd have to still pull it all apart and not just be able to export the HTML very well because it's all, partly because it's database driven and so it's not a simple static page, but it's, but it, I think what Andrew is saying is right is they generally are discouraging that because they want to keep you on there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's worth, it's worth noting that like, if you, if you do go in that direction, um, it, but I, you know, whatever, maybe like you're not so attached to your URL and you want to get something up that looks nice and it's going to be much easier for you. So it's not the end of the world if you do it, you know, um, also. Uh, like specific softwares. Um, I don't know. I think it's more like it's more like we do teach a lot of softwares and DMA. We're really trying to get away from having a conversation around like skills acquisition is kind of what the academic term term for that is. Like, can our student prove that they're proficient in P five JS? Okay, sure, um, that's true. But it's more about the concept that goes into the work. So, you know, I think the things that are deeper and more meaningful are like, what does it mean to be making art? With technology in silicon valley in 2022 like that's an interesting conversation when google is buying you know half of downtown <laughs> with the billions of dollars that they now have in their coffers based on all of our data <laughs> this is this is a, this is a complicated conversation about the public commons and the public good you know uh so if you're if you're discussing that in your portfolio i think it's way more interesting than like i made this with p5js That makes sense, right? Yeah. And I think there's like there's like a real space for like being an artist. You know, it, it is art school that we're all in. So I like that's my conversation. My question is like, how do you express yourself as an artist? And what are the things that you like are passionately like you care about in the world? And where's your voice in all this? Because I think fundamentally, like as an artist, like that's what you're doing is you're you're having a public dialogue that happens to take the form of representation of something right i think without being too uh <laughs> i don't know too what is that esoteric about it or something but 
you know, I, I think if hopefully if if I can impart that to you anything, like take time and do a good job on these and try your best to make them look nice. That's the important part. Because I, I ultimately want things that you guys are proud of too, you know, so you can show your friends and be like, my portfolio. And that's what I think all the faculty want uh, to see you all do your best, right? So that's really the conversation is like, how can we help you do that? <clears throat> so that's why I say like, you know, really, if you can transform some of your, uh, well, like really change your position on, on these things and not think about them as like works that I'm building for class, but rather like I'm working on these portfolio pieces and I want to look really good. And I wanna be proud of these and show these to other people. Um, then how does that how does that change your practice? How does that change your interaction with DMA? So how long does it usually take for us to like hear back if it was accepted or not? It's pretty quick. I mean, yeah. I think like it's like I think at least probably a couple weeks. Um, so the faculty has to go through all of them. It's kind of a lot of work, you know. I think we get like fifty or sixty every semester. Okay. So that means we have to like review transcripts, um, you know, look at portfolios, uh, make sure that all the paperwork is in order too. Because I think I read somewhere that it takes up to like a semester or two, and I might be graduating soon, so I was worried oh, about. No, 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 no. It doesn't take it, it. It'll happen within the semester for sure. It's okay. like a couple weeks. Like you'll know. Okay. Um, the only the only problem that can arise is like if you uh, don't if you don't get in. Um, but I, you know, we're, we were specifically like trying to avoid this problem. So like Hoda in, in your particular instance, if you were like within, I mean, I shouldn't say, okay, we're being recorded right now. Right. Can we stop the recording? <laughs> okay. No, what I would say is like, look, if you have like followed the DMA path your entire way and you have all of your upper divisions, uh, done and you're within like two semesters of graduation, what's the faculty going to do uh, by telling you, no, you can't come into the program? I mean, that's like stupid at that point, right? Yeah, no, that was my fault because I was like, I had a bunch of GEs done before I joined. So I was like, this roadmap doesn't really apply to me. So I didn't pay that much attention. It always happens. Yeah. I mean, this is, you're not, you're not the only one for sure. It's like, we, we do see students uh, a lot of times that are just like, you know, they've, they've gone really far down the, the path and, um, and it's cool, you know? And as long as your grades are good, I mean, it's like not a big deal. Uh, I think the the cooler part is like, you know, you'll be you'll be a part of the conversation um, and that's fun. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a it is it's like, I you know, my, my real question is like, well, what what does it mean if you're if you're within like 10, 20 credits to graduation and, you know, you've got all the DMA upper division classes, like what's the faculty going to, you know, realistically say? Okay, cool. I want to say good job. <laughs> I'm going to advocate for, you know, it's like, whatever. But I, I think that, the, and that's that's one of the, the keys to recognize about this whole space is like, it's really like a milestone. It's not like some major uh, gatekeeping hurdle um, uh, to get into the program. We don't want it to be that. I think there is some, uh, you know, acknowledgement that as Steve knows uh, we're somewhat in cadre, like the victims of our own success. Um, so there are a lot of students now, uh, and we do have a squeeze in the classrooms. We've got, we got two classrooms for like, uh, I don't know, something like 400 students or something like this. So there, there is a question of, you know, like how do we ensure that we're doing a good job with the students that we admit? Uh, that's another part of things, but I don't know. It's, that's more, uh, the uh, like larger scale, like running of the program. Uh, the, the portfolio review is some part of this uh, and it's important, um, but we don't, we don't want to gatekeep anybody, I guess is the, is the big thing about the portfolio. We, we want you to uh, have another step along the way to really define yourselves as artists and build something that you're proud of and that you can show by the time you get out of here. So I would also think in terms of your portfolio as a multi-year uh, exploration of representation of your own work, right? Like, how do you, this is just a start down the path of building out your own portfolios. Okay. Cool. 
other questions? Let me see. Yeah, you did see, um, I think like Rhonda sent out an email about 90 units um, and above 90 units in the problems I can hold. It's not that big of a deal. It's like the, the it just creates sort of uh, uh, bureaucratic procedural issues. Um, you just had to go through extra steps. So it's easier if you get into the program before 90 units. Other questions? Does that, does that paint a pretty clear picture for you all? Does it hopefully, it, does it kind of sound exciting too? I mean, does it like inspire you some to like think about like making your portfolios? Yeah, I hope so. I hope it gives you some good ideas and like now you can go look at some cool artists and think about like, yeah, don't just make a portfolio because you're making a portfolio, like make something cool and like make it a fun piece. This is the end goal, right, for all this stuff, so. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's I think, very cool. uh, so yeah, I think we're at about uh, time here. Yes, that, that all works. So um, yeah, if there are any other questions, I can answer them now. Otherwise, if you feel like emailing me, uh, you're welcome to do so. Be careful, you know, like <laughs> formulate a nice question. I get a lot of emails, so don't, you know. Um, but if you if you have other questions, I'm, I'm happy to uh, field those as well if you don't feel like answer, asking a question in a public forum. Um, but, uh, okay, Alex, I don't recall who said it, but just like, oh, I took my keys, okay. Um, yeah, I think it's always like that. You know, I think there's always this concern about um, uh, if you only have taken like 74 or 75 at this point, um, how do you show, you know, an amazing body of work? So I just showed you a bunch of artists who have been doing this for 20 years, right? And you're like, okay, I have like two pieces in processing. Like, what am I supposed to put in this portfolio? I wouldn't, you know, like six really strong pieces is going to be a much... Uh, better look than like five or I don't know, 10, like, you know, illustrations or something that you're putting in there. So I don't really know the best answer for that, but um, try your best. And all this work will help you in the future anyway. So um, we like all the faculty really want to see you guys uh, do your best and succeed. Um, so we're, we're here to advocate for you. Well, awesome, Andrew. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, no problem. I was just looking at some of these. Okay, so like- Is there any more? There's more questions. Uh, yeah, there's questions sort of rolling through. Okay, so do you mean 90 units of the art classes we take or 90 units? Um, oh, it's it's like all your units. I think if you're above 90 units uh, total. Um, so it's art plus GEs. Um, Yeah, I think I think uh, Hoda, to your point, also this is like it's more interesting when students come in with like you know maybe a group of like ten photos or something that they've taken or like you know some paintings that they've uh, done um, that buttress their DMA portfolio. Um, there is a there is an interdisciplinary component of it. I think we ask for you know seven of the ten to be really more DMA focused, but I think that's flexible. And it depends on what what you think, because if you're making paintings that are process driven, then uh, what's the difference anyway? So, um, yeah, and that's true. Also, if you don't get accepted the first time, uh, you can always apply again. <clears throat> OK. All right, y'all. Well, have a lovely rest of your evening. I'm going to drop off here, um, but it was cool seeing you all. Uh, and nice to meet those of you who I have not met before. Um, but yeah, uh, for those of you that I know, I'll see you in class. For those of you who were in my class previously, good to see you. <laughs> and y'all have a uh, good evening. All right. Thanks again. Uh, yeah.
Ciao. Ciao.